Today we're going to talk about analog versus digital on a really basic level. Most specifically, we're going to talk about how computers interpret an analog sound and turn it into a digital file. An analog sound wave would look something like this. This would be like a perfect sine wave, which would not really ever be heard in nature, but that's beside the point. This analog sound wave, the computer takes that and measures at all these different points, measures those and turns those into numbers based on this point right here. So we could go up and say, oh, well, this is 0.27, and this is 0.016, and this is negative 1.2. Later, the computer could take those numbers and reinterpret them and turn them into actual sound again. We're also going to discuss a little bit of data compression, how computers compress data that is in a sound file, an image file, or a video file. Now the benefit of compression is that it's a smaller file, so it's easier to store, it takes up less space, and it's easier to send to somebody else. One of the ways this is done in sound is it would take it less often. The sampling would be every two or every three. Another way is that it would just go up to here and say, okay, this is 0.27, well, we're just gonna measure everything from here. So it's negative three, negative two, negative one from there, if everything was around that same area. In images, this is done by taking the little tiniest possible pixels and just measuring it in groups of 16 and finding kind of the average color of that. The most important thing to take away from this video is you're going to want to use digital files. They're going to have a better quality. And when you're looking at compression, you really need to look at how far you're willing to go to ensure that the user still has the best experience.